Alright, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your patience. My name is Kelvin, I'm from Star Media Group. Welcome to Manar Star, and this is Star Live. No matter how old you are, claim 2020 vision with modern technology featuring Vista Eye Specialist. And what a special session it will be today because we have here with us Mr. Lim Boon Siang, CEO and founder of Vista Eye Specialist, and three esteemed guest speakers. They are Dr. Ellen Ko. Senior Consultant Ophthalmologist, Cataract and Refractive Surgeon, Dr. Paul Lim, Consultant Ophthalmologist, Cataract and Refractive Surgeon, and Dr. Vian Tai, Consultant Ophthalmologist, Cataract and Refractive Surgeon. Now, good vision is one of the most underappreciated things in life. It allows us to accomplish and appreciate so much, but we only really think about it when it starts to deteriorate, right? While vision does deteriorate with age, more and more young people are starting to experience poor vision. So today, our guest speakers will be sharing with us on how you can benefit from technology-driven solutions to maintain eye health. Just a few quick housekeeping rules. Please switch your phones to silent, and please hang on to any questions you might have for the Q&A session right after the talk. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Dr. Vian Tai up onto the stage to share with us on the three steps Kids Myopia Control Program. Dr. Tai? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dr. Vian. I would like to share my experience about the uh, Kids Myopia uh, Control. And as a parent, I urge all of you have the importance of focus on the eye problem of our kids. As because Kids Myopia is a bigger problem than you think. As a parents, we should detect eye problem amongst our kids because as early as possible that we detect, the better the prognosis will be. Okay. So how do we know that our kids has some eye vision problem? Okay. It is just like a simple uh, observation on the behaviour of our kids, how they use their eyes. Okay. How, for example, we can see how our kids looking at the te television. Sometimes they will go very close to the TV and they might tilt their head on looking at something or they may have frowning when they look at something. So all these observations can raise a question on ourselves whether our kids have some problem. So how do we know that, how do we test? It's a simple test only we can do, to, we can perform to know whether our kids' vision is okay or not by ask them to look at the sideboard or look at the car plate. If let's say they can do that, they can, they, if let's say we can see but they cannot see, means there's some problem with their vision and we should bring them early for the eye check. So, ladies and gentlemen, the kids' myopia program means the is the timing. The key factors for the management of the kids' problem is the timing. The earlier that we can bring them for the eye check, the earlier that we can detect their problem, will be better the prognosis. Why I say so? I had a patient, a boy, 10 years old boy, came to me two days ago. And the mother told me, actually she noticed her boy couldn't see for the past two years but she keep delaying the treatment as you know as a parents all of us are very busy with our own things so it is unfortunate and it is very sad to say that these kids have very bad short sightedness I mean the power is really very very high at the first time i diagnosed him with about 600 power and he has very bad lazy eye so i feel very sorry to him but why I want to speak here is because I want everybody to know, to create the awareness that the kids 
the eye vision of the kids is very important. The earlier that we can detect the problem, then will be better the prognosis. Some of the parents will ask me, once the kids been diagnosed to have a short sentence, a lot of questions they might think of. They might think of, can the short sentence be cured? What should I do to reduce the short sightedness problem? And they may ask, can I give some supplement or herbs to my kids in order to help them? So, by today, I hope that with my talk, I will clear some of your thoughts. And some parents also will even think of, they have one very, I mean that, wrong conception, wrong, wrong, wrong concepts. So, they will think that the by wearing the glasses, the kid's power will keep increasing. So the parents is very reluctant to let the child to try on the glasses. So hope that today with this talk, we will can clear some of your doubt. How common is the kid's problem? It means the refractive error in this world. So uncorrected refractive error actually is the most common cause of the distance vision impairment and it affects about 108 million people in this world and actually is the second most common cause of the blindness globally yeah. and this actually the, this myopia this is the myopia prevalence uh, pictures show that actually myopia is growing towards the year and around this world and it lets us look at this country in 2010, the prevalence of myopia is about 28%, but it keep increasing to 37% by 2020. At the 2050, it's reached up to the 56% of uh, myopia prevalence. So how about the East Asia? East Asia become even worse, where in 2010, the prevalence of myopia is about 47%, increased to 52% in 2020, and increased to 65% in 2050. So, when you look at this graph, similarly, it shows that the myopia, I mean the short sightedness, is keep increasing. It shows the linear increment in both myopes and high myopes. High myopes mean their power is more than 600. And this graph also shows that the prevalence of the myopia varies from region to region and which will be more prominent in China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Singapore and also the South, South Korea. But it shows that actually in 2010, about the prevalence of myopia is about 70 to 80 percent, which actually if you compare to uh, 1950, is only about 30 to 40 percent of the people have myopia. Why there is so much of increment of this? We should think about that. And there is a journal published that with entitled Myopia Boom. And this journal actually uh, records that in the Guangzhou, teenagers in Guangzhou, about 90% of them are wearing glasses, I mean they have the short sightedness. So at, at the first glance on these pictures, Actually, almost most of the kids in most of the teenagers in Guangzhou are wearing glasses. So, how about the prevalence of myopia in our Malaysia? So far, we don't have a very good uh, statistic record or journal reported how is the Malaysian's prevalence uh, myopic prevalence. But so far, Dr. Go Piping actually she had published a journal where. She put out that the prevalence of the myopia in Selangor Gomba area only. And she actually noticed actually the prevalence of the myopia will be highest in among the Chinese compared to Malay and Indian. At the age of the 15 years old, about 65% of our Chinese population actually is myopic, mean they need to wear glasses. Why so? Why it is so our Chinese populations easier to get myopia in my personal view it is because our parents we are very uh, academic we are very we will emphasize on academic more so we will let our children read in the early age and also we seldom let them go for outdoors activities 
all those three things contribute to the short-sightedness in our population and also the condition become worse when there is what there's an electronic devices being introduced to our children in a very young age so what is myopia when you're talking about myopia so much of myopia myopia actually is the short-sightedness where this is a normal eye when the light coming into the eye this is the front part of the eye this is the back part of the eye when the light coming into the eye the light will be focused on the retina but for the myop patient the eyeball will be more long become elongated and when the light come in they will focus in front of the retina so the patient might have the problem of the blur vision or the dist at the distance and the high myop means the power is more than 600 where the light will focus even further in front of the retina so this is what the pictures of the myopia patient perceive they can see near very clear but the distance everything will become blur the stages of my the, these are the stages of myopia where we can classify a low myop moderate myops and high myops where the low, low myops is the power less than 300 moderate myops is the power 300 to 600 and for the, those high myop is part the power is more than 600 so what are the risks of myopia this is a fundus of the normal person fundus means the back of the eye these are the this is the optic nerve and the, those are the vessels okay. these are the fundus of the myopic eye where you can see every structure is very thin out so you just imagine like a balloon we, this is the balloon that where we blow like a medium size and this is a balloon that we overblown this balloon so the myopia eye is exactly same like this condition where every the, the internal structure of the eye becomes stressed out so the easy to get the problem what problem might arise from this myopia the problem is our structure being stressed out so easier to get this we call as the retina detachment and the patient might present it with flotus and, uh, and also the decrease of the vision or they have, might have some dark curtain feel of vision defect and the patient will present to us they might also have glaucoma where may cause the irreversible blindness what is glaucoma? glaucoma is the problem of the optic nerve where this is the normal people they can perceive well like this but the glaucoma people they might have tunnel vision and the, the vision will become very limited for the high myo people they might have cataract as well early onset of cataract compared to the normal population and this cataract actually can cause reversible blindness where after the reduced surgery the vision might get better how about this the myopia patient tends to have a myopic macular body or especially those have very high power where the central of the macula where we call it the fovea they get bleeding and patient might have problem with the vision especially we call it as a central scotoma central vision will be affected and the myopia people also easier to get this we call it as the myopic macular degeneration where the central is thin up too thin until they become diseased and patient couldn't see well this is a normal people uh, what the normal people can perceive but this is what the myopic macular degeneration people perceive so in summary actually high myopes people tend to get cataract glaucoma and retinal detachment and myopic macular degeneration it depends on what the the power they have as long as they has the higher power then the risk of getting those are increased what are the causes of myopia yes genetic could be one of the causes but it's not the only one environmental factors also very important some people will ask okay uh, by looking at the family tree could we know that who will get which one of our, our kids will get myopia which one no so now i let you have a look on this uh, photo I said, actually this is my patient this girl is my patient she came to me a few months ago and she have no power 
when asking the further history, the father have the power of short sightedness 1000. Mother have the short sightedness power of 600. And her youngest brother have the power of 500, even at the age of the nine years old. And her youngest brother have the power of 100 at the age of six years old. So now the, the question come, father asked me, A, eh, doctor, my girl have a very strong genetic because I have a so high power, but why my girl have no myopia? Why she have no, I means the power. But, and when looking at my son, yes, because of genetic, inherited from us, definitely he will have power. Okay, so from here, what we can understand is genetic, yes, carries some component of the myopia, development of myopia. If both parents have myopia, the child will get 6.4 risk of getting myopia. But environmental factor will be more important and will be a key point. What kind of environmental factors that I'm talking about actually is the how they use their eyes. So I asked the father again, how your daughter used her eyes? The father said, my daughter is very socialized. Usually it's not at home and usually it's not really reading. She doesn't like reading. But uh, compared to my son, my son likes read, reading a lot and he seldom go out for the outdoor activities, everything. So from here we know environmental factor will be a key factor for the development for the development of the myopia. What kind of the environmental factors that we are talking about? Long hours of looking at the electronic devices, long hours of the reading without outdoors activities, abnormal posture of reading may contribute to the myopia and also under very dim illumination. I had a patient. I just wonder why my patient's power keep increasing although I have given whatever that I should and I asked the mother could you tell me what usually your girls do mother told me that my girls like reading but sometimes when I switch off the light because it's the bedtime the girls should go to sleep but I noticed she will read under the blanket and so so that's why her power is keep increasing. So here, I would like to convey a message is, as a parent, we should wash out whatever the activities that our children is doing so that they won't do something that is, will cause harm to them. So if let's say now, we are thinking, I suspect my children to have myopia. So what should we do? We should go through a comprehensive eye check either they should start on atropine or not and this one is decided by the doctor and they should have a pair of control myopia control glasses or auto key i will describe in more in details later and last but not least lifestyle modification and follow-up the first step will be comprehensive eye check the second step is, as a doctor, we will determine whether we will start this atropin eye drop on the kids or not. Is and this eye drop actually uh, in the Singapore they have done a study where right, we call the Atom Two study, and from this study actually they noticed this drug actually quite safe to use in our kids because it have a very low concentration, and it can reduce the progression of myopia about fifty percent. Another kind of the treatment could be the auto K. Auto K is one kind of the rigid contact lens where we put on the patient's eye before bed and we will take up after patient wake up in the morning. And this rigid contact lens will mold the shape of the cornea so on the next day the children no need to wear glasses. Actually this auto K was designed before this for those who don't want to wear glasses. But after that, they notice actually this auto K can reduce the progression of myopia up to 40%. So, this, uh, so that's why we advise patients if they are in their comfort zone, they are okay, they can try on this auto K. But most of my parents, they are a bit reluctant on trying this auto K because this is a contact lens. And they are afraid of the risk of the infection 
especially on the cornea. Once the eye, I means that this is the cornea, get infected, they might have scar and also they might have, uh, they might affect the child's vision. Another type of the modalities to help the kids is the, we call as the glasses, a pair of glasses where we call as a myopia control glasses. These glasses actually is different from the conventional way of glasses, where these glasses will, will, will reduce the problem of the elongations of the eye. Why I say so? For the traditional glasses, they say that this one, we call as the hyperopic defocus, may cause a problem of elongation of the eyeball, so the power of the eye will keep increasing. So with these new methods of the lens, so they call it as a myopic defocus at the peripheral zone, so they can reduce the progressions of the myopia. Last but not least, lifestyle modification will be the most important one. There's a study done in the Singapore and also the Australia. They noticed actually, uh, they done in the, the study done in the Chinese, Chinese Singaporean and also the Chinese in the Australia. They noticed actually, 29% of the Chinese Singaporean have myopia compared to 3% of the Chinese population in the, this uh, Australia have myopia. Why so? They compare. Actually, both groups have equally amount of the study time. But why this uh, Singapore have higher prevalence of myopia? Because lacking of outdoor activities and also lacking of the exposure to the sunlight. So this Dr. Morgan, he said that sunlight may stimulate the release of dopamine from the retina and inhibit the elongation of the eye that result in myopia. So here, sunlight is very important. Outdoor activities is a key point for the control of the myopia. So the, they suggest that 10 hours per week outdoor activities under the sunlight will help the children in reducing the progressions of the myopia. So this is the classroom special design in China because uh, China have a very bad prevalence of myopia and what they do is they build a glass uh, classroom where they allow the light to penetrate into the classroom so the student can read there. So this is another way of the, the effort from the China. They try to combat their problem of this myopia. What we can suggest is for the kids during the reading, they should use the elbow distance and elbow distance where it's about 25 to 30 centimeter apart. This is a video actually show that the China they try to combat with this uh, myopia. School teachers in central China's Wuhan city came up with a new way to keep kids from nearsightedness. They installed balusters on desks to ensure students in primary school keeping a moderate distance from the books when writing, thus preventing myopia. The effective way to adjust the sitting posture, however, caused online outcry that it seems put kids under the yoke. Experts said although incorrect posture contributes to widespread nearsightedness among teenagers, the stress of after-school work is the major reason. Now simply holding them behind the rail is far from enough. So the, the other devices that been invented in China, so they try to use this and prevent our kids from the uh, stay too close to our book. Good posture is important during the reading as well and the good illumination as well and uh, about the nutrition. A lot of people will think of whether it's because our current type of the modern nutrition means the modern food give rise to this increasing of this myopia. Okay, well the sweets and the high cal calorie food cause the myopia. Actually, there is no strong study to say that those foods, modern food, can give rise to myopia. But they said if the high calorie food actually can cause the, uh, we call it the diabetics, and the diabetes mellitus actually can give rise to the myopia. So, anyway, for our kids, so we should give them healthy food instead of this fast food for their normal development as well. Okay, so. Diabetes, actually, people say that diabetes can cause the myopia. This is the known fact already. How about the sleep? There is no evidence that directly say that sleeping is very important for this uh, progression of the myopia. But anyway, lacking of the sleep actually can affect our children's ability to learn as well. So it's advisable to sleep more for our kids so they can learn better 
in the in their study. So as conclusion, uh, to control the myopia, actually the first thing that what we should do is modification of our lifestyle, means change of our eye usage habit, increase the outdoor activities, a healthy diet and good nutrition, and wear the auto key and avoid under the corrections of the glasses and I might start the atropine depends on whether these kids need or not. With that, I thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Tai. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got another video prepared for you, so give me one second as we bring that up. Our eyes are one of the most precious gifts. They're portals that help us navigate our world. And windows that let beauty into our lives. They let us see the subtle meaning in a knowing smile. The first change of a season. The last ray of light. And all the splendor that lies before us. But without good vision, it's not about what you're seeing. It's about what you're missing. What if you could put your world back in focus? See life's moments as they were meant to be seen. What if you could enjoy freedom from glasses or contacts? The iLASIK procedure may change the way you see the world and how the world sees you. People have always sought new ways to open up the world around them and experience the richness of life's adventures. They perfected air travel, which opened up experiencing once unimaginable beauty and splendor. It was believed to be only a wistful wonder. People brought back these inspiring adventures in the form of pictures. And in time, they kept evolving these picture-taking devices, so that in time, the visual freedoms they represented could be shared in all their mesmerizing beauty and inspire a new generation to explore the world around them. And over time, the pursuit of visual freedom tried to keep pace with these captivating adventures. But until now, the evolution of visual freedom lagged. Glasses and contacts are not true means of freedom. Glasses can be inhibiting and contacts can be problematic. But now, a new evolution is here. Discover what you've been missing with Evo Vision ICL. Evo is an implantable columnar lens that can provide more than just excellent vision and freedom from glasses and contacts. Evo's benefits include sharp, clear vision in harmony with your natural eyes, removability for your peace of mind, no dry eye syndrome to worry about, and UV protection for your active lifestyle adding up to true evolution and visual freedom. Evo, evolution and visual freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Dr. Paul Lim onto the stage to share with us on going specs free with LASIK or ICL vision correction. Dr. Lim. Yeah, today I'd like to talk to you uh, regarding what can we do to be glasses free from the age 18 to 14 years, uh, 40 years old. At the age 18 to 40 years old, these are the most important phase of our life in which we are physically very active. We work hard to, to achieve our dream. We, we want to learn new things. We want to experience uh, and new adventures. And we want to fall in love. We want to look at our best and be our best. So at this time, we do not like the shakers of glasses actually inhibit us from doing what we want and what we like. I wonder you all remember this movie? Ah, uh, this is Spider-Man, the first generation Spider-Man, I think about 20 years ago, okay? You can see that. The first superpower that the Spider-Man get is 2020 vision. Oh, too bad we don't have the chance. We do not, we do not live in a comic world. Oh, huh? we we cannot achieve uh, like superpower uh, by be beaten by a mutated spider. But what to do if we say that we, we cannot see uh, clear? We always have to depend on glasses. In the morning, we wake up. It's like 
everything is blur. We have to like start searching for glasses. We go for outdoor activities. We go for sports. We have to find ways like wearing contact lenses or wearing special goggles for us to involve in sports. These are all very inconvenient. So what to do? What to do if we really want to get rid of the glasses? <clears throat> so enough of the pop culture references. Uh, we come to the more uh, serious thing. But what are the types of refractive error? Why we do need? Why why we need glasses? Not all of us are blessed with a normal eye in which the image are formed on the retina and see perfect image. A lot of us uh, actually uh, develop refractive error. What are refractive error? Okay, there are many types of refractive error. The main one are the nearsightedness, in which the image actually form in front of the retina. That's why we need some uh, uh, lenses to refocus the image onto the retina. And there are another type is called farsightedness. Farsightedness is the image formed behind the retina. Okay? And another, the third type will be uh, astigmatism, or a more common term will be irregular vision. Okay? All these three uh, refractive errors make us need glasses to improve our vision. Without glasses, we can, cannot see good vision. So at age 40 years old, another problem sets in. Our lens, our natural lens, become very stiff and not elastic. So the lens are not able to focus a near object, help our eyes to focus near images in, onto our, in our retina. So this is another problem. At 40 years old, everybody will have price biopia, in which near object will start to need reading glasses. So to correct the refractive errors, the most common things we do are Wearing glasses or wearing contact lenses. Glasses, as we know, is quite inconvenient. And contact lenses, it also comes with a risk. In fact, the risk of having an infection in 20 years wearing glasses, wearing contact lenses is actually higher than the risk of infection in an LASIK. So to get rid of glasses, the technology actually, uh, there is a technology that helps us to permanently correct our vision, to make us able to see 2020 without wearing glasses or wearing contact lenses. So I'm going to talk about two more common or uh, what I feel is the uh, uh, best way of correcting the, glass, uh, correcting the refractive area. So they will be number one, LASIK. Number two, uh, implantable contact lenses. Okay? So vision correction with LASIK and ICL. Actually, all the refractive errors that I mentioned just now, the short-sightedness, the long-sightedness, astigmatism can be corrected with uh, uh, this uh, LASIK and also ICL. And the press biopia, uh, I put that plus minus because there are some uh, adjustments, some uh, uh, compromise have to be made if we need to do uh, a LASIK or ICL on all these patients after 40 years old. So the best time actually to do LASIK and also ICL should be from the age of 18 to 40 years old. So LASIK, LASIK is a very common term, okay? Uh, what is actually LASIK? It is a short form of laser assisted in situ keratomyelosis. Keratomyelosis is actually a Greek word. It means reshaping of the cornea. So it's very easy to understand. We reshape the cornea using laser. Okay? So LASIK had been in the uh, market for about 20 years. Okay? It's not really a new technology, but we can say that it's actually quite it's a mature technology and it's a quite reliable technology. Over these 20 years, many improvements have been made on this technology and it improved the safety and the reliability of this. So, you can see that in 1996, LASIK was approved by FDA. And 2001, femtosecond LASIK was invented and approved. And this femtosecond LASIK actually is a way that we use laser to create the LASIK flap. Okay, later on I will describe to you in detail. And it improved the safety of the procedure a lot. Okay, and 2004, the wavefront wave guided LASIK was implemented. Is what we commonly known as custom LASIK. And this improved the accuracy of that whole procedure. So what does a LASIK procedure entail? Okay? Number one, we create a flap using the femtosecond laser. Number two, we lift up the flap. Number three, we will use a, another type of laser, what we call an eczema laser, to reshape the cornea. Number three, the flap will be put back into place. And actually, no stitches is uh, are needed for this because the flap actually will go back to the original position and actually it will, it will form quite a strong uh, addition back to the original places. So the femtosecond LASIK, what I uh, mentioned just now, it improved the safety profile a lot because previously, LASIK flap was created by a sharp instrument. You just imagine, 
we need to use a sharp instrument to make a 130 to 150 micron flaps. Okay, this actually, uh, the thickness is really, really thin. Huh? So there, there are uh, some complication that, possible, uh, that, that possibly can happen when we use all these uh, sharp instruments on the cornea to cut the flap. By using femtosecond LASIK, actually the safety profile improved a lot. A lot of uh, flap related complications actually have been reduced to very, very minimal. Okay, and next, we uh, custom LASIK okay, versus a conventional LASIK. In conventional LASIK, what we do is we check your power, spectacle power, like uh, let's say one person have uh, 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 300 degree of uh, uh, this uh, uh, short-sightedness, 200 degree of uh, uh, astigmatism. Then we will just key in into the uh, laser machine and the laser machine will just reshape your cornea according to the power key in. That is a conventional LASIK. In custom LASIK, actually this involves a wavefront scanning of the surface of a cornea. As we know, uh, our eyes are living tissues. Not everybody's eyes are, are the same, just like our thumbprint. Okay, our cornea is just like a thumbprint. You have a lot of like, it's like, like, like a map, okay? It's a, a lot of irregular irregularities, imperfection, that actually will cause some aberration on our eye when we see things, okay? This custom LASIK actually use a wavefront technology to scan the whole cornea, and according to all the, the, the mapping of the, the, the scanning, the laser will correct all the imperfection, all the irregularities on the cornea. And this actually improves the uh, accuracy of the laser a lot, okay? And we can see that in with LASIK, we can see there are more than 95% satisfaction rate. As I say, it's a very mature technology and it's a very, very safe technology. And 91% of those with custom LASIK achieve 2020 vision or even better. And it is a superior safety profile in all laser LASIK, like I say, the femtosecond LASIK. From the chart here, you can see that compared to the convention conventional LASIK, Custom LASIK can achieve higher chance of 2020 vision and actually they will have better uh, night vision and gain more night driving vision. So who are the suitable candidates for LASIK? As I said, the best time to do LASIK will be from 18 to 40 years old. So preferably 18 above or 21. Some, some, some surgeons prefer 21 years old. And the patient had, uh, the, the candidate ha must have a stable refraction for at least one year, meaning that your refraction is already fixed. So you, don't, you won't have like the power K1 increasing every year before you come and see us. Okay? We want the power to be stable before we do any permanent changes to the eye. And patient must have, the, the candidate must have a healthy immune system. That means there's no autoimmune disease or any de immune deficiency problems or any severe diabetes. And the candidate must not be pregnant or breastfeeding at the time because uh, during pregnancy and breastfeeding, the hormone changes, hormonal changes will actually alter the uh, thickness of the cornea and the refractive area. So it's, it's not really uh, advisable to do LASIK during that time. And a uh, patient must have uh, some uh, more realistic expectation, okay? Next, we will look at the eyes. Huh? The, 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 the surgeon that performed the LASIK, we will go through and screen the eye, see whether the eye is suitable for LASIK or not. Because... During the LASIK, we need to ablate some of the uh, uh, cornea tissue. That means the cornea will become thinner. So uh, a person must have at least cornea thickness of at least 500 microns so before we can do the LASIK. In a thin cornea, we can't do LASIK, okay? And second one, there's no severe, uh, pre-existing severe dry eye. This one we will uh, is very important to screen because LASIK sometimes might worsen the problem of dry eye, okay? And next one, Patient must have a normal corneal structure, meaning that uh, there are some conditions, what we call keratoconus, in which the cornea is structurally, structurally very weak. So if we do LASIK on this kind of eye, we can, we can weaken the cornea even further. So it will create more problem. So we will screen the eye to make sure there is no keratoconus and no previous cornea infection like herpes, uh, bacteria or fungal ulcer before. And there's no long-standing recurrent eye diseases like uh, severe glaucoma or eye inflammation before. So after we screen the patient, if the patient is suitable candidate, then we will allow the patient to go through the LASIK. So a lot of 
uh, I mean, uh, uh, people will think that, oh, LASIK, LASIK, hey, is it very safe? Uh, is it, well, well, am I going to get blind because of the LASIK? Now we talk about the side effects of LASIK or the complication, possible complication. As I said, the side effect and the complication, the rate is actually very, very low. Okay? Most people will talk about dry eye. Okay? Dry eye after LASIK. In the femtosecond LASIK, meaning that all laser LASIK nowadays, uh, we seldom see permanent dry eye due to that uh, LASIK, okay? Most of the dry eyes are tempor uh, temporary, usually lasts about one to six months, okay? And it can be treated using uh, uh, artificial tears or taking some uh, supplements like omega-3 fatty acid. Number, number two, visual disturbance. Huh? Most patients with LASIK, my complain of some glare and halos or starburst at the first month uh, after LASIK because of the recovery period uh, of that uh, 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 laser. But most of it will improve, okay, over six months, okay? We seldom see it, it will improve to a, um, if not all, it will reduce to a minimum acceptable level. I seldom see patients complain of um, unacceptable glare after six months after LASIK, okay? And uh, some actually will have some delayed subsidization in, in which they might not get 2020 at the first day. Or it might wait for about uh, one month or about six months for the vision to stabilize due to, uh, because different people have different rate of uh, recovery. Okay? And actually, there are some with uh, under correction or over correction, but no worries, LASIK can as well always, uh, the flap can always be lifted up again and we can redo the LASIK in what we call uh, enhancement and bring back the patient to uh, 2020 again. And there are some small chance of regression over the years, okay? Uh, let's say from one year to 20 years, there are chance that the power might come back slightly. Let's say the patient started with uh, 900 degree of uh, short sightedness. When the, the, the power come back, it comes back very slowly, like 50 degree or 100 degree huh, over the years. And all these patients, if it uh, affect the vision, we actually can do an enhancement, relieve the flap again and do an enhancement for the patient and bring back the patient to 2020. So what are the rare severe complications? Number one, infection, okay? But infection under the flap is nowadays is very rare huh? with uh, proper um, standard operating procedure in our OT. The infection rate is very, very rare. In fact, like I say, the chance of getting an infection due to contact lens is actually higher than uh, uh, the chance of getting infection during the laser procedure. Number two will be inflammation. If it occur, we might need to lift up the flap to wash the flaps. And the chance is also very low, uh, less than 0.1%. There are some uh, rare complications like abnormal self-growth, like weak cornea. This weak cornea, like I say, we will actually uh, most of the time rule out the patient. When we see the cornea thickness is not adequate, we will not do laser on the patient, okay? And number two, flap buttonholes or flap displacement. This usually occur in the, this uh, conventional LASIK when we use the blade to cut the flap, okay? In all laser LASIK, all these complications are very, very low. It's, it's, it's almost uh, near to 0%, okay? Blindness. Blindness due to LASIK uh, in one eye, there is a possibility, one in five million chances, but... Uh, uh, everything carries a risk. So you compare to what, what are the risks of getting all these uh, uh, things uh, in your life, like being injured by a toilet, one in 10,000 being struck by a lightning, is actually even lower huh, than uh, getting a blindness due to lacing. Okay? So next, uh, like I mentioned, there are some candidates, their eyes are not suitable for LASIK, their cornea are too thin, too thin or their myopia, short-sightedness power is too high. Okay, we, as surgeon, we do not like to do uh, lacing on a patient with a very, very high power because we will alter the cornea tissue too much. We will have to scatter, uh, ablate away a lot of cornea tissue. So, in a way, we would like to preserve, we want to uh, 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 cause minimal changes to your original eye to achieve the best results. Okay, so in all these eyes, there are another options in which we do not touch the cornea. We do not sacrifice any tissue. In, uh, instead, we implant the lens into the eye, okay? This is what I call implantable contact lens. There are many types of implantable lenses in the market, 
but I'm going to talk about a more um, commonly and uh, safer option, which is that ICL, implantable columnar lenses. Okay, another these two pictures are the iris clip lens in which there are a certain type of claws that clip the lens onto the iris, okay? But uh, so far, the safety profile for this type of lens is the best, in which is the implantable lens that we put in front of the lens and behind of your iris. So what is implantable col columnar lens? Actually, the technology is actually as old as LASIK, oh, almost about 20 years already. And 2005, uh, it is approved by FDA. It's currently used in more than 64 countries. And more than 900,000 ICL have been implanted for these 20 years. And over 100,000 uh, of these uh, has already been 15 to 20 years. So we know that the, 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 we already are quite familiar with the safety profile. We know that it's quite reliable. They don't have any long-term uh, uh, problems uh, on the material of the lens after 20 years. So ICL actually offers a, a very, very wide range of uh, refractive correction compared to uh, LASIK. And I say the higher power of uh, uh, short-sightedness, we need to uh, ablate away more tissues in LASIK. But in ICL, we do not need, do not need that. So it can correct the short-sightedness up to 1,800 1, degree. I recently just performed an ICL on a patient with 2,000 degree of short-sightedness. Uh, we, we cannot achieve 20-20 uh, vision for her because our limit is only uh, 1,800, uh, 1, uh, 18 diopter. But for her, she, we, we are able to reduce the short-sightedness up to about 100 degree, in which she is very, very happy. Because with 2,000 degree of short-sightedness with the thick glasses, it's actually, um, it already affects her uh, daily living. So without glasses, she can't see anything. Okay? So with that improvement, actually, he's very happy with that uh, 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 um, uh, results. And long-sightedness, we can correct up to 1,000 diopter also, and astigmatism up to 600 diopter. So what is ICL actually? Huh? We just make a small incision about 3 mm on the cornea. The lens is actually very soft, very, uh, it's foldable. So we fold the lens onto the needle and we inject the lens into the eye and then we adjust the lens onto the position behind the iris and in front of our lateral lens. And then the eyes is washed and a small, the, 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 the small incision wound is self-sealing, so no stitches is uh, needed at all. Okay, so who are the suitable candidates for ICL? The age will be more than 21 years old. Uh, this is uh, the company suggestion, but uh, in some patient, when the refractive power are stable, we do do on um, patient with 18, uh, above 18 years old. Okay, if they're really, really keen to have that uh, procedure. Okay, and stable refraction, like uh, less, uh, less than five uh, diopter changes in 12 months. And the patient's eye have to be big enough, meaning the anterior part of the eye, what we call the anterior chamber, have to be more than 3 mm. Okay, if the eyeball is too small, huh, the anterior chamber is too narrow, because of the lens occupies some space, okay? So in all these eyes, uh, we, 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 we are not able to perform ICL on all these smaller eyes. Okay, and there's no previous ophthalmic surgery, <coughs> no previous uh, ocular pathology, and uh, ICL columnar actually contains some porcine protein, so uh, it's subjective to some uh, cultural and uh, religious uh, restriction. Okay, so the advantages, the suitable candidates are those with very high power of short-sightedness. Actually, with moderate power of short-sightedness, if they prefer the safety profile of ICL, we do that on the patient also. And it's good for patients with thin cornea that is ruled out for LASIK. And the good thing about ICL, it will never induce dry eye, okay? And it actually has high patient satisfaction according uh, to, to the study, it's almost 99%. And it's reversible, meaning that if any problems or any uh, unsuitability of that lens, we can always remove it, okay, and or exchange the lens. So, what are the side effects or uh, risks? Again, we are putting, uh, we are changing your refractive error, so they might have some halos and glass, but we seldom see those uh, uh, very significant halos and glass. Most of it is actually minimum and acceptable. And cataract or glaucoma, all this. 
actually the lens itself, there is a possibility it might cause cataract and glaucoma. Most of the time it's due to the unsuitable sizing of the lens in which it's reversible, meaning that we can always exchange the lens for you if we find that the, slide, the, the, the lens is uh, at risk of causing cataract or glaucoma. So it is actually treatable and also reversible. And infection, infection process, I mean the infection rates is very rare. We have yet to see here in our center, but worldwide rate to quote you is about 0.0167%. And uh, from the report, the most of the infection is actually uh, um, able to be treated. Okay, it didn't cause blindness. And inf inflammation of pigment is dispersion again might be due to the uh, um, unsuitable size of the lens, in which can be controlled by eye drop or removal by of the lens. And in astigmatism lenses, there is a chance that the lens rotate in the eye, and and the power of astigmatism. Estimatism might come back. In this, it's actually quite easily remunerable in which we can just uh, do some rotation. No? We go in the OT and do some rotation of the lens again and bring back the power to zero. So commonly asked question regarding all these two procedures, LASIK and ICL, does it cause pain or not? Usually both uh, procedures cause minimal pain, really minimal pain. Like it's, it's uh, much less compared to you visiting a dentist actually. Uh, you might find some sensation of pressure during the uh, procedure. And what if I move my eyes and blink during the procedure? Actually, we have some instrument, what we call some speculum to hold your eyelid open. As long as you are very calm and cooperative, slight movement shouldn't be a problem because there's some eye tracker. Huh? The eye tracker on the LASIK, when you move, the LASIK uh, ablation will move together with you. So slight movement will not be a problem. And the surgeon will actually, most of the time, will be very patient, will, uh, will instruct you and wait for you to, to, to calm down, huh? to, to, to be stable before we do anything, okay? Yeah, that's all my presentation. And uh, any question? Good morning, doctor. Uh, two questions. One, you talk about flag, flag, flag. What is flag? Uh, F L A P uh, just now. Uh. Oh, flat, man. In, in simple man language. Okay. Uh, uh, next yeah. question. Uh, you have LASIK and you have ICL. Yeah. And from my little understanding yeah. here, ICL is actually you put in a, a, a lens. Uh, LASIK, what are you actually doing? Uh, are you uh, doing. Uh, no. Yeah, yeah, Put yeah, in okay. simple man language. Thank sure, you. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, you see, uh, this, this is what we mean a flat, man. Uh. This is a cornea. So, when we do the, uh, the first laser, when we create uh, this thin layer of cornea, uh, we, we will cut one part of the cornea like this. Okay, you see that? This is the flap. Yes, it's, it's a piece of cornea. Yeah, we do not take out. We do not take out. Okay, we just only, number one, we cut it. We create the flap first. You can see that there is a hinge here, right? So we just lift it up. Okay, we need to lift it up, but we don't take it away. We don't throw it away. Okay, uh, we need to lift up. Then, for us to do a laser on this part of your cornea, then we cover it back. Uh, yeah, the laser actually, the first laser is to cut the flap, to create the flap. The second laser, we will. Um, a blade part of the cornea, meaning we will reshape the cornea, meaning that it is some form of uh, 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 take away a thin, a thin um, um, uh, layer of your cornea. Okay, it's very, very thin. It's most of the time only about 70, 60 microns only. Okay, very, that's why uh, just now I mentioned, we, in high power, we have to ablate a lot of tissues. That's why we don't like it. Okay, we don't like to do laser in very, very high power because we have to cut away a lot of tissue. Uh, not, not really cut away, a blade away, okay? Uh. So after we have done this, we put the laser to buy Okay, you see, after we do the laser, we put the flap back, cover it. Yes, yes, it reshaped the cornea, okay? Uh, and we put it back, we don't need any stitches. 
Yes, yes. What we're doing is reshaping the cornea to correct the vision. Ah, ah. Like, like carving, carving the cornea. Okay? Yeah. All right, sir, does that answer your question? Thank you very much. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure some of you still have some questions. We do have a Q&A session after all three speakers have uh, presented their talk. So please hang on to your questions for now. As of now, thank you very much, Dr. Lim. Okay, thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as for our final speaker of today, please join me in welcoming Dr. Alan Koh onto the stage to share with us on the modern four-in-one technology. Dr. Koh? Hello. Okay, um, very, uh, very good uh, morning to ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for spending your, this precious Saturday uh, joining us for this event. Okay. Just now you heard about Dr. Tai talking about the vision problem among children and also Dr. Lim talking about the treatment for short-sightedness among young adults. So how about us who are at 40 or above? Okay? So what is the most um, bothering uh, vision problem we are facing most of the day now? Okay? Maybe you take out the glass, uh, your handphone and you put maybe about one feet up from your eyes. How many of you all actually can see clearly your SMS your Facebook without squeezing the eye or move away or even take out the glasses to see. Okay, I think, like me, I need to really f bring further, okay, to see clearly, okay? So this is the new problem we, should, we are facing now when we are reach above 40 and above. Okay, so this is my, uh, today is my pleasure, uh, pleasure to, to share my experience on how to actually get back our new, the clear new vision without using a glasses, okay? Okay, just like our body, our eye and our vision actually will change over time. When we become uh, aging, we start to have problems like difficult reading and doing your works. We need more light to, to do our daily activities. We have problems with glare, halos, and we have change in color perceptions, and even we have some reduced tear productions, okay? Today I will talk about the first one only, okay? Okay, we learn a new medical term. This is called press biopia. What is press biopia? It's lao hua, okay, in Chinese. It's a problem with near vision after 40. Okay, so why we get press biopia? Simple, aging process. And in Greek, actually press biopia means that old eye. Okay, and most of the time we will get it when we are above 40 or sometimes even more younger. Some, some people even they start to have press biopia at the age of 35, okay. And uh, what happened in press biopia? Just now, Dr. Lin already explained a bit. Okay, it's actually the natural land in our eye, which is actually flexible and able to flex and accommodate for near vision, become more rigid and become weaker when we are reach about forty. And this is, uh, the land is no longer to help us to focus for near visions. Okay, we look at the diagram of the normal eye. You see, this is the cornea, the lens here is hold by the muscles. When we look at distant object, the light will focus, the, the, the lens actually in relaxed uh, re stage, and the light will focus on the retina to see clearer. But when we look at near vision, our lens actually will become more rounded, uh, by use, um, the muscle will become uh, constrict and more, make the lens more rounded, more flexible, to focus the image to the retina. But when we become older and older, okay, the lens become more rigid and less flexible and the muscle become more weaker. And now, when we look at near object, the focus point is actually behind the retina and not able to bring back to the, to the retina. So we have a blur vision when we look at near. So how we know that whether we start to have um, press biopia, okay? Like, just as I say, you're having to hold your smartphone or any read, reading material further away from you. You cannot really uh, read longer anymore, like when you're young. Okay, your vision become more blur in a dim environment. And also, some patients, uh, some people who are actually wearing glasses for short-sightedness, when they are young, they are okay to see far and near with their glasses on, but now they had to take out your glasses for near vision. Okay, some patients may come, they, they complain their vision, their fluctuation of vision actually is due to uh, press biopia. And also, uh, some patients will come to see eye doctors saying that they have frequent headache, eye strain, watering eye when focusing too long. 
Okay, this is also the sign of a uh, press biopia. And also, okay, so what is the treatment for press biopia? So it's very simple, okay? Glasses, okay? Either reading glasses or multifocal glasses. But most of, us, uh, most of us don't like to wear glasses because it's very annoying, okay? Because your, your power actually uh, keep on increasing, okay? You always have to change your reading glasses, okay? And is this is not cheap, okay? It's expensive and hustle to bring around, okay? And also, uh, this happened to, uh, to all of us. We always, when we get out, we are, looking, we are always looking for our uh, reading glasses, okay? And especially when you do some work like cooking, your lens may become fogging, and definitely the glasses can easily break away, uh, break, breakable, okay? And the last one, and very important mo for most of us also, okay, you reveal the person age, okay? A lot of experts, the beauty experts say that if you want to look younger, don't wear reading glasses, okay? <laughs> okay, so, so now if you want to throw away your reading glasses, what can we do? The only way is by surgery, okay? The surgery for, there's many types of surgery for press biopia, okay? Like LASIK, uh, some LASIK that like we call monovision LASIK, press biopia, press B lazy and even can put the inlay, but all this is uh, something not um, permanent, okay? It's not something uh, long-lasting. So we are talking about refractive lens exchange now, okay? Which is more uh, permanent and uh, long-lasting, okay? So what is a refractive lens exchange? Or we call it a lens replacement surgery or clear lens uh, uh, exchange uh, or extractions, okay? It's actually a surgical procedure to remove the natural lens inside the, our eye and replace with an artificial intraocular lens, or we call it IOL, it's an artificial intraocular lens. So actually, the RLE is same with cataract surgery. The only thing different is, in RLE, the lens uh, is actually is clear, okay, rather than a cloudy due to cataracts, okay. So after remove the lens, we put in a refractive. Uh, intraocular lens, and this can help the pa uh, patient to achieve 2020 vision or better without the, re uh, the need of uh, corrective glasses. This is a simple theory of RLE, it's simple, okay? You see, make a small incision, okay? You are making a small incision, and uh, we take out the natural lens. This instrument uses a special type of energy to break up the center of your natural lens. Then it will carefully suction out those lens pieces. Your surgeon will then insert an artificial lens called an intraocular lens, or IOL. This IOL will stay in your eye permanently. The new lens lets light pass through and focus properly on the retina, bringing back clear vision. Okay, so this is a sim uh, simple theory of RLE. Okay, what is the advantage of refractive lens exchange? Okay, we actually can correct wide range of refractive error like uh, short-sightedness, long-sightedness, uh, astigmatism and uh, press biopia, the reading problem, okay? And it's suitable for most of the patients who are actually not able to proceed with LASIK and ICL, okay? And uh, once you have done the RLE, you no need any cataract surgery in the future, okay? So it's you, because you already take away your lens, okay? And it does not alter the corneal thickness and therefore eliminate some uh, related uh, complication, okay? And this type of surgery takes about 10 to 15 minutes and is performed as an outpatient uh, basics. And it's fast and uh, minimum pain, okay? And there's a more, more long-lasting result. Okay, who is actually suitable for RLE? Okay, who are above 40 and already have some reading problem and who, don't want, uh, not, uh, who do not want to wear glasses, you can think about RLE, okay? And Patients, for some patients who have uh, short sightedness, very high short sightedness, uh, not suitable for LASIK or ICL, even they are not reached 40, we also can do a RLE for that, uh, for the patients. And uh, before, people with long sightedness, actually RLE is the most appropriate surgical options for a patient with a uh, very high uh, short, uh, long sightedness. Okay, the evolution of RLE. RLE is actually similar to LASIK, okay? So in the traditional way, the lens is extract manually by the surgeon and the surgery is highly depend on the surgeon experience and also their, their skill. But in the, the process, uh, actually now, evolve into no blade, okay? We are causing no blade 
by using the femtosecond laser assisted surgery. And together with the implantation of multifocal intraocular lens, we're able to achieve a good vision for far, intermediate and near. So what is the benefits for this new generation femtosecond laser surgery? It's actually a bladeless small incision. Uh, it's highly uh, precise because you're using all computer and there's low risk of error and it's actually time saving. In the RLE, okay, the surgery, the surgical duration is about 10 to 15 minutes and no pain and patients actually are conscious during the procedure with only a topical eye drop okay, to, to numb your eye and there's no injection needed and then we'll use the femtosecond laser for, uh, for the uh, following procedure like the first one we'll, we, do the, we do the scan on the eye so that this helps us to plan the surgery more better second we'll do the, we use the laser to make an incision rather than using a, a blade okay then, to, okay, the third step, we are using a laser actually to make a, a circular, a perfect circular uh, opening over the lens, the natural lens. And the fourth one, we use the laser to actually make the lens uh, into small pieces. Okay, then we use, uh, we put the instrument into the eye and take out the lens. And the last one, we will implant, a, uh, implant an intraocular lens. Okay, this is the difference between the uh, traditional way and the, the no blade method. Okay, you need a blade to make an incision, but in the laser surgery, laser cataract surgery, we're using the, the laser to make the incision actually. Okay, uh, again, uh, the first step using the blade to make a wound, or we use a laser to make an incision. Okay. So this is a no blade uh, surgery. That is a traditional. You can see the incision is different. Eh? This is using a blade. It's a straightforward blade uh, incision. And uh, for the laser, actually we can create pattern over the, the wound. And actually this can prevent uh, leaking or infection and more faster recovery. Okay, we go for the, this is a very important uh, procedure also. We need to make an opening over the lens, the natural lens, so that we can take out the, the, the natural lens. Okay, so you, you need to manual way. In the manual surgery, you need to, to really uh, do it manually. But with, by using a laser, you can make a perfect, perfect uh, rounded uh, opening, okay? And then you need, uh, you need to put an instrument and slowly break the lens into small pieces before you take out. This is the manual way. So you need to use energy to break the, the lens, okay? But in laser surgery, you actually break the lens before we, uh, before we take out. You can actually make it more spe uh, small pieces and you can easily take out without using much energy. Okay, after taking out, then we implant a new lens in, okay? So, Post-surgery, uh, on the day of surgery, patients need to arrange uh, right after your surgery. But most of, most of the people can uh, resume back to normal activity, include driving within a few days to a week after the surgery. And the improved vision should be immediate for most of the patients, but some total corrective benefit uh, may be fully realized after a few weeks. And the common experience during the recovery period is like glare, halos, uh, blur vision, and mild discomfort as the eye heal. So, just now we say about uh, talking about taking out the lens. Oh, say now we have to implant an artificial lens in. So, how to choose the intraocular lens to enable us to see clearly for far, intermediate, and near? Okay, what type of lens to put in actually is uh, mainly depend on the patient lifestyle. Okay, whether you like to do a lot of outdoor activity, reading, cooking, or driving at night. Okay, because our vision. Uh, can actually divide into three zones. Okay, first one is the uh, distant, it's mainly like for outdoor activities. Intermediate is like for cooking, computer works, uh, uh, playing mahjong. Okay, like near work is reading smartphone. So if we put in, if after uh, take out the lens and we put in a conventional monofocal lens, it can only help us to see the distant. But the computer, the the intermediate, the near vision 
you still need a glasses, okay? So to achieve a 20-20 vision for all the distance, we actually need to put in a modern trifocal uh, intraocular lens, okay? So that can enable you to see the distant, intermediate, and near vision. And it's suitable for a patient who prefer seeing clear without depending on glasses. But this style of lens, you need adaptation. Uh, you need to take adaptation take about a few weeks or more. And uh, initially, you feel there's possibility of noting glare and halo, especially at night time. Okay, so in summary, um, when you are above 40, okay, uh, we, we start to experience press biopia. Okay, if, if we don't want to wear glasses, okay, RRE is uh, one of the su uh, suitable solutions okay, to achieve a good vision without glasses. Okay, now what is the frequent asked question about this? Huh? Okay, who is actually not suitable for RRE? If the patient, when we check, if patient has severe dry eye, uh, usually we need to treat the dry eye first. If not, it can affect the, the result. And if you have some autoimmune disease, which also can lead to infection, can dry eye. So sometimes we avoid it. And if you already have some retinal problem, then the eye problem with causing uh, poor vision, sometimes we don't do for the patient also. And uh, if the patient have unrealistic expectation, like uh, expect some zero risk, perfect vision, no need adaptation, uh, usually we we'll avoid this type of patient. Okay. Some people will ask whether I need a cataract surgery in the future. No, you doesn't really need because you already done, you already removed your lens. So, so the cataract is only formed in the natural lens. You won't form in the intraocular lens, the artificial ones. And can I exchange the lens to a better one after the surgery? Some people may be done and other place, they put in a monofocal, they come to us, they want to change. Actually, you can change but it comes with very high risk of complications, so usually we avoid it also. So will we still have price biopia after surgery? If you put in a multifocal lens, a multifocal intraocular lens, you no need because you already, uh, your reading power is already stable after putting an intraocular lens. Okay, will the surgery affect my future eye health care? Okay? If you develop any new eye uh, health problem later in the life, the RRE implantation should not prevent you to have a successful treatment, okay? Common eye health problem is like glaucoma, diabetic retinopathy, AMD, actually can monitor and treat as normal after the RLE. Okay, any further question you can ask us again. Good morning. Yes. Uh, I have a cataract in one eye, but I also have high myopia in both eyes. If I go for the cataract surgery in this eye, how will it affect the overall vision and the balance after the surgery. So that's right. People with like you, we cataract with one eye. The other eye, most probably maybe is early cataract or clear lens. We can actually, to balance out, we do the both eye. But we do one day, one eye first. The following day, we have to do the second eye to balance out. If not, if you just do one eye for the cataract uh, eye, the other eye, you don't, you don't treat it. You need to wear a glasses, which actually not easily to balance out. So we advise patient also to do the other eye at the second day. Okay, uh, yes, the lady there. Yeah, I have two questions. Mm -hmm. One is I've done um, bladeless eye treatment before. I've done the, blade, uh, what do you call the bladeless uh, laser treatment before. LASIK, la. LASIK, LASIK for yeah. when you're young time. Yeah. Okay. So is it suitable to do this? Definitely, there's no, it's, it's a different thing. LASIK is the corneal procedure. Now we are changing the lens, actually. So the surgery procedure is actually same like normal people, but um, there's some problem, uh, people who have done LASIK, uh, there's some problem in calculation of the lens power, okay? So most of the time, uh, normal people, their normal cornea, the calculation is, is most of the time very accurate. We can get actually like zero power to maybe plus or minus uh, 50, the, the power. But patients with uh, done surgery before, LASIK surgery before, Sometimes we uh, explain to patient that it maybe you have some residual power, okay, within 50 to 100. Mean that after surgery you may have a bit of short sightedness, or but near usually not a problem, okay. Only the distance, okay. The long distance. Or? Yes, long distance. Most of the time, uh, the main main problem we facing for patient who have done LASIK before, maybe 10, 20 years ago, uh, the main problem is after surgery their distance may not as sharp. Okay, so, but that one can correct it with the glass also. Okay? Oh, does that mean it's a mm. possibility that I still have to put on glasses? Yes, so that's why I say 
most of the time, normal activity you doesn't really need, but sometimes if your power is within 50, 100, it will affect maybe your night driving or this, then you may still need to put in. Okay, okay second question. Um, is there an expiry date for the lens, the implant lens? The intracular lens? lens? Yeah. Yes, it's about 50 to 100 years. So if you can live so long, <laughs> then it's expired. You need to take out. Okay. <laughs> Any question? Yes, uncle? Mike, for the uncle there? Okay, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Later, I'm so sorry. Later, we do have a Q&A session with all three speakers very soon, so please save your questions for just a bit. We'll try to get to as many of them as possible later. As for now, thank you very much, Dr. Ko. I am the giver of clear vision. to let you see your loved ones to let you be yourself free of glasses or contact lenses I can help you have healthy eyes the caretaker for your parents' sight and the protector of your child's ability to see I am Vista help people see from blur to clear since 1999 I am the giver of confidence beauty and safety and to empower you to fulfill your dreams I am here to help you enjoy life with clear vision. I am here to hold your hand throughout your vision journey. I am Vista. Gentlemen, now let's welcome Mr. Lim Bun Siang, CEO and founder of Vista Eye Specialist, to share a few words. Mr. Lim. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you very much. I, I just want to say a few words, uh, really. Number one, I, I just want to thank you for taking a valuable time on a Saturday morning uh, to come here and attend our talks by our doctors. Uh, I know it's a long weekend, you know, but unfortunately the star is all fully booked for their auditorium and uh, the, the star life is very popular. So again, uh, I know it's a long weekend and it's Saturday morning. I really, again, thank you very much for, for taking your precious time to come this morning. <laughs> Second, I want to thank the doctors because it's really, you know, it's Saturday is very busy clinics, yet they take the time, the time to come. You know, um, Dr. Ko is our senior surgeon. Um, he's, he's actually going to Vienna uh, in, in two weeks time to actually share his experience in RLE, you know, he's doing so good, he's doing so experienced that even the European doctors would like to listen to what he got to say there. And in fact, um, I need to apologize in advance, I know that some people already start booking appointment with Dr. Ko, but his appointment is all booked up because after that he's going to uh, Vienna and then when he comes back, he's, he's got a very busy schedule. And for Dr. Lim, you know, again, um, I've done LASIK, you know, I've done LASIK 20 years ago, 1998. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't available in Malaysia, so I had my eyes done, and that's the reason why I started uh, together, with, together with another ophthalmologist. And here we are. I can tell you, um, when I when I use, I mean, when I had my eyes done, it was the blade, and now I have vision freedom. And, and what Dr. Lim said is right. You know, it's at the prime time of life when you're 18 to 40 years old, when you have no reading problems. You know, that's when, you know, you can enjoy a clear vision without glasses and contact lenses. And Dr. Lim is practicing in Puchong. In fact, I think last month, uh, he did over uh, 20 eyes of ICL. And so much so, patients are so happy, you know, that we bring boon cake to us. You know, I mean, how, how often you get patients, you know, to purposely come and thank you and say, you know what, thank you so much. You know, I, I, I never see clearly before and now I will see. So laser, LASIK, ICL is, uh, again, is something that is already matured. I've done it before 20, um, 20 years ago, so I just want to share this information with you. 
And of course, lastly, we, we, we need to know about the children because it's a big, I mean, we call it epidemic or whatever it calls. In China, they declared a war. You know, in fact, so much so they even controlled the online games. You know, in terms of making sure that the kids' short-sightedness are controlled because it's now running out of control because of our lifestyle, because of our iPad, because of our iPhone. You know, you hear horror stories where people get blind after three days consecutive playing video games, right? So it's real. You know, and I hope today when you go back, like what Dr. Tai say, go outdoor, bring kids to outdoor. When at dinner table, please, you know, have our Asian tradition of just chat, just chatting. You know, don't put the iPad in front of them. If you put it today, it's okay. If you put it tomorrow, it's okay. If you put it every day, for one week, for one month, for one year, one day your eyes will give up on you. What that means is that probably your eyes, your power will increase. You know, Dr. Tai is very passionate in this area. So again, please spread the word because we need to tell more people. When you walk past a dinner table where there's iPad, you start seeing children who are looking nearer and nearer because you know why? The restaurant is very busy, right? When they play YouTube, the sound come out, right? They cannot hear. So what they do? They go nearer and go nearer and it becomes a habit. So again, it is part of us that wanted to promote the awareness. Again, I want to thank the three doctors for, for, uh, you know, for, for, for coming out on a Saturday morning to share with us about this latest information technology. So can we give a round of applause to the three doctors? <laughs> I know we're going to be here. Um, unfortunately, the, the staff wanted to get more information, interview with them afterwards. So, but we have our staff as well. So out, out, outside, we have a, some screening of cataract as well. So again, I would like to thank uh, the staff for organizing this. I also like to thank the staff for, for taking the trouble to organize all this. But we'll be here. You know, we'll make sure all the, answer, the questions are answered. And if you can spread the word, we're actually going to have carnival in two weeks' time. Okay, it's on the 2nd uh, to the 4th of October. The details are here. I won't elaborate. Uh, you, I'll put a post outside. You can have a look at it. So please spread the words. That's why we are here today. We are very again appreciative of star life that together we organize to spread the words about number one kids are having big problems especially when they're young they start having bad habits they're not going outdoor anymore they're looking at screen for people who are 18 to 40s where they're prime time you can tell them if they're frustrated with glasses and contact lenses there's a solution there's a proven solution and for people who are frustrated when they're 40s tell them you know where they're reading problems and things like that and when they're 50s and when they're 60s, when they have cataract, tell them there's a solution. That with the modern technology, they now can actually enjoy clear vision. A lot of people ask me, you know, uh, I mean, I, I'm in a trade, a lot of people ask me, hey, how do you choose the right doctors? How do you know which one is the good for me? You know, which, at the end of the day, you have to choose, the, you have to see the doctor personally yourself. You have to have the chemistry, you know, you have to ask questions, just like how some of you are asking, eager to ask questions, that's very good. Ask questions, listen. Number two, whether they care about you, whether they care about your eye, or whether they care about your wallet, right? So that's very important. And number three, most important, you need to find a doctor who has the right tools, right? Imagine he still used the same blade that he uses 20 years ago instead of a laser, right? So choosing the right doctor is very important. I want to end with a story uh, because I know there's some more q and I just want a quick one, end with a story, you know. Um, a few months ago, our doctor was visited by a patient um, who are about 50s, early cataract. Um, the doctor told him that, hey, you know what, you got colon cancer, you're stage four colon cancer, you have six more months to live. So the patient came and see our eye specialist and say, look, hey, you know what, I only have six more months to live, I got a bit early cataract, what should I do? Of course, the doctor said, you know what, you have six more months to live, so six more months to live, just live with it, and then that's it lah, you know. You know, the patient thought about it and said, you know what, that's not what I want to do. I can't bring all the money with me to the next world. So I want to enjoy life. I want to have clear vision because when I close my eyes, I want to have a clear picture rather than a blur picture, right? So the good news is that, the good news and the great news is that with technology, that is now possible, okay? And our three doctors have shared with you from kids, from, uh, from the young adults to, to even people who are 50s and 60s, 70s. 
I still remember when I was young, when a dog was running around and hit the pole, light pole, they say, look, time is up because he cannot see anymore. It's no longer the case here. You know, our Prime Minister is 93 years old, right? So everybody can live up to 100 years old. But most important, you have to take care of your eyes. And if there's any problem, go to see your eye specialist. Okay, with that, again, much appreciated for your Saturday morning. Again, thank you very much. We'll proceed the panel. Thank you very much, Mr. Lim. Once again, please raise your, question, raise your hand if you have a question. And also, please state your name before you begin. Good morning, speakers. Uh, my name is Mr. Ho. Uh, my question will be on cataract. Uh, will be related perhaps to two doctors about lens. One is, then, uh, is ICL. Yes, I heard about ICL, uh, Dr. Lim. And the other one is, is uh, RLE. Can I ask, can I ask you, uh, these days, cataract is very common. They replace lens. Uh, are these two ILs, ICL and RLE relevant? Actually, uh, uh, it's a replacement of lens for cataract. Can you elaborate? Okay, again, just now ICL actually is for a clear lens. Okay, if you already have cataract, you are not suitable for cat uh, ICL anymore. Okay, because you are implanting a lens, extra lens, in front of your natural lens. Your natural lens should be clear. Only you can see clearly after the ICL or even LASIK. So if you already have cataract, you don't think about LASIK or ICL anymore. Okay, your only solution is cataract, cataract removal. So just like I say, the RLE and the cataract removal is actually the same type of procedure. Only thing, in cataract, your lens is cloudy. In R I RLE, we actually uh, reserve this word to a clear lens. La. So actually, it's the same thing. Okay? So for you, if you already have cataract, if you want to have better vision without glasses, then you just go for cataract surgery. Okay. Mm. Uh, what is RLE? It is a replacement We call lens? a replacement, uh, well, we call it refractive lens exchange. So we want to we want to get a, a good vision by taking out the lens and implant a, a refracted lens so that you can correct your short sightedness, your long sightedness, your astig, or your, your this reading problem. It's actually the same with cataracts. But cataract, we, 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 if you already have cataract, we straight away say cataract. People understand what is cataract. Okay, but RLE is actually same as cataract surgery. But we can't tell patient 40 years old, you already have cataract, you have to do cataract surgery. Understand? So we tell it this is our LE. The same thing. It's the same thing. Yes, exactly. It's the same thing. But the lens is clear. Okay. In our LE, if you don't want to do surgery, it's okay. You just wear glasses. But cataract, you cannot. Okay. Cataract, you should really blur your vision. With glasses, you cannot see clear if, if you already have cataract. You must do surgery. Uh, yeah, my name is Lau. Eh? I already did a cataract on one eye using a monofocal. Yes. But now I realize I cannot see near. Yes, so the on monofocal. My second is eye, mm. Can I do a multifocal? Yes, we do a lot of this type of patient, okay? But most of the time, multifocal, you can get, uh, most of the patient, 95% of the patient can get very good vision for far, distant, and in uh, the near. Okay, they have no problem. Most of the time, they are very good. They can throw away their reading glasses. But people like you with the mono vision uh, in one eye, they are a monofocal in one eye. And if you implant a multifocal lens inside, most of the time, your distance shouldn't be a problem. You have very good distant vision. Intermediate, so far, should be okay. But for the near, we always tell patients that you have 50% of chance you still need to wear reading glasses. Okay? We cannot say 100% anymore. Okay? But it's a good try, okay? At least you try, you have the 50% to be spectacle-free. If you don't try, definitely you 100%, you need a reading glasses. Hi. Hello, my name is Sally. Um, are these procedures uh, suitable for patients with floaters? Or is it two different things? Okay, actually, it's two different things. Floater right. is behind the eye because of aging. Okay, your vitreous become uh, a bit cloudy. So everyone will have floaters. Okay, whether you have floater or not, you still can go for all these style of surgery. Okay, 
I, I understand that after the surgery, the vision is very good, very clear, very bright. Okay? And when we have floaters, there are uh, dark spots, right? So does it mean that the dark spots will look even darker? <laughs> Clearer? Uh, let's say in, <coughs> in the eye with uh, cataract, the, actually the floaters will be a bit less um, um, uh, apparent, less obvious because everything are cloudy. So when you have a very bright vision after the cataract surgery, the floaters might get a little bit more prominent. Okay? But um, most of the patients, 99%, floaters is not, uh, it will not uh, affect their vision. Huh? The eyes and the brain will actually learn to filter out the information of the floaters. So you only see floaters when you like, try to look at the bright sky and look at the white uh, wall. So um, in uh, benign floaters, meaning that floaters that has no problem, uh, we do not really um, advise for any um, uh, intervention or any procedure to get rid of the floaters. Yeah. But it's true that after cataract surgery, the floaters might be a little bit more uh, obvious uh, when you see it because your vision is very bright now. Hello. Hello, my name is David. Huh? I've had uh, RLE for both eyes uh, about two years ago. Then within six months, my right eye couldn't see anymore because there was secondary cataract. Then within one and a half years now, my left eye has got the same thing, secondary cataract. Uh, how... how how often is this thing happening to people with uh, lens replacement? Okay, um, this is lens replacement. It's actually like cataract surgery. You yes. implant an intraocular lens. Okay, okay. Ten ten percent of patients la, huh, will de develop. We we call it secondary cataract. Actually, it's not cataract. It's actually the you just now you see we put an intraocular lens inside the capsule. Okay, the capsule. Okay, the capsule when you are big, uh, sometime after age, after few years, the capsule actually behind the capsule become thicken, okay, become dirty. Okay, it's about ten percent to fifty percent of patient will develop this. Yes, after few years, but only ten percent of patient will need the laser, the yet we call it a late yet laser, to actually take away the dirt. Okay, it's a very simple procedure, less than one minute procedure. So. This is not something like a complication which we cannot treat. So most of the patients, uh, when, before we do the surgery, we tell that, that you have the chance to do, you, you may develop this within one, two years, okay? And not everyone need to do a laser to correct it, okay? If your dirt is just very minimal, we don't take it away, okay? okay. So it's actually quite common, but it's, not, it's less than 10% of patients will disturb their, their vision. Uh, does that mean it's a follow-up? that requires more payment or it's included in the... It's not included, okay? All the centre is not provide this as a included uh, surgery, okay? okay? So you need to follow up. After cataract surgery, it's advisable, and especially your age, huh, it's advisable to see an eye doctor every year. Okay. Uh, sorry, second question uh, is relevant. Is that after the lens replacement, I can read very clearly. But after one year, it seems to like out of focus. Uh. Sometimes because the secondary, you see about the secondary cataract, which can actually make your vision blur. Okay, and also some other eye problem like you may have some dry eye problem. Okay, or when you are aging, you start to have some degenerative uh, retinal problem. Okay, all this we have to check and see again. Hello, uh, my name is Alan. I got one question. Uh, when we need to see the eye specialist, assuming our our eyesight you know, is normal. For example, like in my case, I just see the I just go to the optician to change my glass, glasses every two or three years. So, and I also understand that the optician also able to tell you should if you have any problem with your eye. So but is it necessary to go to the uh, doctor? Because I think optician is enough, I don't know. Actually um when I sit here, when I look at you, I know you have high myopes, maybe about 400, 400, okay, about moderate myopes. So for those uh, moderate myopes, or uh, if they have no problem, actually no need to come and see us. What problem that you might have is like, we call as like uh, floaters, 
or you have the problem of the curtain light appearance, something like blocking your vision, or you have problem of the sudden decrease of the vision, then you can, you can come to us. Or you have a family history of glaucoma, then you can come to us for, uh, for us to have a look. If not, I think usually no need. Hello. Hello. Okay, I have two questions. One question is, uh, there's a claim saying that if you drink lots of uh, carrot juice or there's uh, MLN selling this super lutein, it will help to improve your eyesight tremendously. That means uh, with glasses, you can later on without glasses. That, that's question one. And uh, question two is, uh, okay, I have pressed myopia. So if I go for RLE, uh, will my three vision be... Uh, to what stage? Okay, or you like you say, uh, I can have without glasses for long sight, but uh, I still need uh, glasses for my short sight. Um, for the first pay, uh, first question, uh, actually, it pa is partially true only la, Okay, carrot juice contain a lot of vitamin A. It's very good for the eye. Okay, in our retina, our uh, this uh, pigment, retina pigment, uh, it it it, it con, uh, consists of a chemicals. It's rich in vitamin A, it's, uh, derivative. So, eating adequate vitamin A actually is good for your retina health. If you have um, low intake of vitamin A or deficiency of vitamin A, certainly there is a chance that the eye will get blind. But <coughs> Eating extra vitamin A doesn't mean that you can go from myopia, uh, from short sightedness until you don't need to wear glasses. Then that is not true. Okay, uh, so so uh, it's, it's, it's good for the general uh, general health uh, by eating carrots or papaya, things that rich in vitamin A. Uh, the second second question is, uh, huh? Sorry. I already. Okay. This one I say, if you, do, you go for the surgery and you implant a monofocal lens, then you, you only can see the far. So if you want to be spectacle free, you want to see far, you want to live without glasses most of the time, then you have to implant a trifocal lens. Yes. So trifocal intraocular lens. Uh. Okay. It's a different with the glasses, okay? You need a thorough check. Most of the patients, after we implant in the trifocals, we don't say 100%, there's nothing with 100%, but 95% of your time, you know, doesn't really any glasses anymore. Okay? Yes? The floaters you're explaining, but can it uh, disappear over a long time? That's one. Next thing is, uh, is there any supplement for it eh, to get rid of it? Uh, yeah, it, it will not really disappear because it's, uh, floaters is actually inside the eyeball, okay? Inside our eyeball, there's a jelly-like substance uh, that uh, maintain the shape of the eyeball. You just imagine if like inside a, uh, a soft ball, without any substance inside, the thing will just crumple, right? So the jelly actually will maintain the form. So when, when the jelly get degenerated, uh, so there will be some impurity inside there in the form of floaters. It will not get disappear, but um, due to the uh, effect of gravity, it might sink down to the bottom and it will not block your vision. So some people will experience say that uh, initially the floaters is quite obvious. Later on, it becomes uh, less of a nuisance. But on and off, when they move their eyes, the floaters will just, uh, just reappear again. That's why we call it floaters with floating around. Oh. <laughs> So it will not disappear, um, uh, strictly speaking, it will disappear. Uh, but it will become less obvious when it sinks down to the bottom of your eyeball. Uh, then uh, supplement uh, for floaters, uh, so far, no, no. There is no uh, proven um, supplement that can reduce the floaters. Hi, uh, my name is Jack. Um, this is more of a post-treatment uh, question. Uh, for those of us with an active lifestyle, all right, after the surgery, can we still continue? Active in a sense like um, yoga practitioners, we do inversions where we upside down poses. Is that still okay? Uh, for LASIK uh, they, and ICL, for LASIK certainly there won't be any problem. Lah, huh? Okay, for ICL, um, okay, uh, let me explain to you. Lah. Let's say 
ICL, if you have astigmatism, ICL need to be put on a position uh, that, uh, that correct your astigmatism. Okay, for short-sighted, no problem. Whatever position, no problem. But if ICL, it need to put on certain position and that is prone to rotation. Okay, let's say you are a type of very, very active person, do a lot of somersault, like gymnastic, all this. Uh, theoretically, there is a possibility that when you turn your head and do somersaults, then the lens might have uh, some rotation. Uh, okay, but 90% of the case, the lens are very stable. Once you put in, it will not rotate. But if you are very, very active lifestyle like this, like gymnastic or a gymnast or uh, this uh, person who do all these kind of activities, then we will review you and explain to you what is the possibility. La. Anyway, if there is some rotation, we can always uh, go in and re-rotate the lens or put in a bigger lens so that it will be more stable. So it can be exchanged, actually it's reversible, as uh, it is actually uh, can be remedial. Okay. Yeah. I have a 17 year old boy, right? Um, what I need to know is uh, the benefits of atrophic drops and uh, uh, auto K, is it? And the side effects. Uh, another question um, I'm wearing contact lens. Um, before I seek any procedure, right? How long do I have to take out my contact lens? Okay, for your son, is it? 17 years old. Okay, for 17 years old uh, children, actually we don't really uh, recommend atropine on them already. Atropine is for those or kids less than 12 years old, where the progressions of the myopia is more than 100, uh, because of one, more than 100 uh, diopter per year. So means in the fast growing age group, then they really need my uh, atropine. Because atropine actually is not like say like stop the progressions of myopia. It can reduce the progression of myopia to about less than 50 power per year. So mean for your son, if the age already more than 17 years old, mean actually the growing of the eye is not that much already actually. So they don't need atropine. What they can do is they can put on the auto K. Auto K mean actually is good. Auto K only apply for those pre, uh, power less than 600. It's not more than that. More than that also Auto K couldn't help. So it's uh, for your son, I think maybe after 18 years old or, nine, or 21 years old, when the power is really stable, he can go for the LASIK or ICL. But currently he can maintain whatever the glasses that he has or he can try to use on Auto K. But auto key, the requirement is more strict actually, because uh, for those who because auto K have the risk of the infection, always get the risk of the have the risk of infection. So we always like we we need we must make sure that the parents really take care of the kids before they can commit themselves to use the auto K. Because if let's say the parents uh, refuse to clean the contact lens, the rigid contact lens, then they might get infection. If the parents say, I need my mates to help to do, then no, this is not a good candidate for us to, 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 to start on the auto key. And uh, third question. Side effect of what, sorry? Side effect of auto key like the infection, is it? Okay, so far a lot of people say, hey, does the auto key cause the problem of the dry, and dry eye? Because like soft contact lens like you wear, it actually can cause dry eye. But the auto key, the material itself actually is the hydrophobic. Con compared to our contact lens, soft contact lens, which is the hydrophilic. Hydrophilic means they will absorb water from our eye, so our eye will get dry. Hydrophobic means they actually they don't like the water. So actually auto key, they don't have the problem of the dry eye for the kids. And actually it's quite safe for the kids. As long as we take care of the hygiene of this auto key, should be a no problem. But we need to assess the, your, your son first before we determine whether he can put on the auto key or not. Because uh, if pay, let's say he has the problem of allergic conjunctivitis, and then uh, we call it it's a very severe dry eye because of the ocular surface, ocular problem, all those things, then they shouldn't be a good candidate for the auto key. The eye drops, uh, the eye drops nowadays, too many types in the market. But uh, what are the eye drops do you recommend? Huh? 
What is the eye drop that you're talking about? Is it for the dry eye? Yeah, mostly dry eyes. Like, at the age, like uh, 60s, 70s. Okay. So, the, uh, for the dry eye, the eye drop that we recommend is for, we call it as the artificial tears, which is a preservative free. Preservative free means they come on, uh, they come with the satchel one. One box, they got like three small <coughs> satchel. Then that one will be better for you because preservative free, there is no side effect. But if they come on with the bottle, because bottle, they might contain some preservative, which we, uh, is not recommended to use for a long term. Any brand also can, no problem. Actually, they are all corn, elegant. There's a lot of brand in this uh, market. But as long as it's a satchel form, then it's a preservative free, then it's safe to use, even for the kids as well. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a little bit more time for a few more questions. So we'll end the last two questions here. And I also have some questions written here from members of the audience. So let's take the question over there. Yeah, I have a question to Dr. Ko. Um, after the RLE, uh, let's say if I develop a glaucoma or cloudy, I have to do the laser. What if the patient already has thin cornea due to the first laser treatment? Does but that affect it? Just like I said, uh, the RA is just like cataract surgery. Yeah. It won't affect your future any treatment for like glaucoma or any uh, surgery like for retinal problem. Huh? Maybe you have a retinal hole, retinal detachment, or you have an AMD, you need injections. All these, it will just do like the same eye, uh, same like normal, normal eye. Okay, okay? thank you. Hi, um, I have two questions here. One is actually for teenager who is actually around 14 years old. Um, she has actually has uh, recently developed high myopia, which is actually 700. So what are the things like, I mean, what are the options that we have to kind of like help her the progression, I mean the progression of myopia or actually to kind of like, would that be a certain age that they will actually stabilize it? Second one is actually for myself, I mean like in terms of, uh, recently in terms of the press myopia is actually kind of like progress a bit like every year I was my vision is actually getting blurred so other than um, and also I have a dry eye so would that the dry eye cause um, cause the myopia to be uh, price, uh, price myopia to be myopia to be worsened or is this a natural aging issue thank you let me answer your first question huh? for your uh, children who is uh, 14 years old Actually, just now I have mentioned, for those who are more than 12 years old, actually, uh, the atropine is not really suitable for them anymore. So the one of the suggestions I can give you is only the auto K, if possible. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So the, if the for 700 is only the myopia control glasses. And we need to have a look. Because, uh, okay, there is no true or false to say that atropine cannot use for the kids. Uh, who are more than 12 years old. If their progression is more than 100 per year, I will still try on those who are in the elder age group. But only in the study, usually they uh, suggest that for those who are less than 12 years old, uh, suitable to use atropine. But more than that, actually, it's not that suitable, but still can give a try. Because you have no other uh, things can help your children anymore. Because the power is more than the 700, uh, we can't really put on the auto key for her. And uh, I think the lifestyle modification also is very important. Usually uh, for kids, I think it's because of the, our, the way of our culture. So they will, they will end up with the so high power. So you want to reduce, I think, go more for outdoor activities and also the uh, under the sunlight exposure. Usually the kids, the progressions of the myopia, they will stop around 18 years old or 21 years old. So it means now it's 14, another four or five years to go. So the, after that, the power will be stabilized. And only that, and also you need to know is like, now it's 14 years old, actually the power usually is uh, start stabilizing already. Because uh, more than 12 years old, actually the power increment is about 50 per year. Uh, so it's not like when they're less than 12 years old, the increment of the power is about, usually is 100 per year. For the second question, I pass to Dr. Okay. 
Uh, okay, uh, about your problem, the dry eye, and also the presbyopia. Okay, this is because of aging. Like just like I say, when you are aging, you start to have presbyopia, you start to have a dry eye, especially when you reach a menopause era. Okay, so the dry eye and the surgery is usually different. Okay, dry eye, you will continue having it, and you need to treat your dry eye on and off, okay, by putting eye draw, uh, take a supplement for the dry eye, okay. And your dry eye is not very serious, you still can go for the, uh, what I call the surgery, the RLE surgery to correct your vision. So after done the, uh, uh, the RLE, you can actually see far intermediate and reading. And your reading power will be stable after the surgery, you don't need to keep on changing glasses like now. Okay, but on and off, you still need to put artificial tear because it's a two different things. Yes, still be because dry eye is because of your is due to your aging. You cannot produce enough tears, and also because of your lifestyle. If you use a lot of handphone, computer, not enough sleep, your your dry eye will be more serious. Okay, so it's actually two different things. All right, we'll take our very last question here. Uh, Dr. Tai, uh, we should check on, on this uh, auto K lens. Because I have a daughter who is using this auto K lens uh, since she was 12. She's uh, coming to 19 now. So actually, her power is increased, starting with 550 and now it's by 800. And may I know what is the success rate for this auto K control, uh, lens in terms of control of the power? And may I know if there's an age limit after which it's not suitable for her anymore? Thank you. For the auto key, actually, they decide uh, no age limits. La. Actually, she can use for quite when uh, reach adulthood, also doesn't matter. Then after that, he might switch to the, uh, I mean the soft contact lens. There is no problem about that. And also, that why the, there is still a lot of progression. Is it that your daughter is wearing the auto key? So we need to look back again, how is the lifestyle? Like what I mentioned just now, auto key can reduce the progressions of the uh, myopia about 40%. That means they reduce the progression, but they are not stopping the progressions of the myopia. So how we use the eye is actually is very important. So for the so many factors that contributing to the myopia, actually lifestyle, how we use the eye, mean that always read in the dark or the posture is not good, all those things contribute to the progressions of the myopia of the eye, even though we use the auto key. The key point is the uh, lifestyle modification, actually. All right, and finally, I have some questions uh, provided to me here, written by a member of the audience. Uh, doctors, can you please explain what is the difference between presbyopia and hyperopia? And secondly, will ICL or R RLE do away with myopia? So the first question was about presbyopia versus hyperopia. <coughs> okay, um, uh, there they are actually a lot of confusion re regarding these two uh, problems, hyperopia and presbyopia. Okay, because both of these conditions, the treatment, I mean, to, to correct it with glasses, is actually using a plus power lens. Okay, so the similarity is that both can be corrected with plus power lens. Okay, but the difference is hyperopia. Hyperopia, as I just now I showed the picture, the image usually always form behind the retina. Okay, so the patient will need a plus power uh, uh, spectacle all the time. Okay, when they see far, uh, due to the hyperopia, it will be blur also. Uh, due to the hyperopia, senior will be blur. So. All the time the image is formed behind the retina, he will always need a plus power lens in front of the eye. Okay? Impressed biopia is different. The problem is on the lens. Okay? Inside our eye, there's a lens like our um, uh, camera in which it will change shape. When the image comes in front of you, in the object comes in front of you, your lens needs to be a bit thicker so that it can focus the image onto the retina. Okay? When the lens uh, loses its function of changing shape, that means after 40 years old. So the lens will be fixed size all the time. Uh, and when the object is near to you, your image will form behind the retina. That's why when 40 years old, press the up there, you only need plus lens when you read, when you see near object. Okay? So press the up there, the difference is you need spectacle plus lens only when you read, but hyperopia, 
you need plus lens far and near both all the time. Hyperopia can occur any time, like uh, in the children up to uh, old age, 90 years old, they can have hyperopia. Press biopia is a problem of aging, so it only occur after 40 years old. The lens become weaker and weaker, the ability of it to focus become weaker. Starting will be about maybe 50 degree, then later on will be about 300 degree when the patient reach about 60 years old. So myopia and uh, for myopia, uh, LASIK and IC ICL can actually correct myopia. Uh, but reflective lens exchange, it can correct myopia. At the same time, same time it can correct press myopia also. So for patient with myopia and press myopia, uh, actually the, 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 the one of the better choices will be RLE. And for patient with myopia only, then uh, they can choose RL, uh, ICL or LASIK or RLE. But usually in very young patient, they have the ability to focus. We do not really will suggest RLE to the patient, okay? Um. Okay, that concludes our Q&A session. Thank you very much to the three doctors, Dr. Alan Ko, Dr. Paul Lim, and Dr. Vian Tai for the insightful talks and also for taking our audience questions. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause again for the three doctors as well as Mr. Lim Bun Siang and for yourself for joining us here on this long weekend. We hope you learned a thing or two from today's session and we hope to see you again at the next Star Live. Thank you very much. Have a nice day ahead. <laughs>